All right. Good evening. Welcome to St. Francis Baptist Church in Mount Falls, Texas. Well, the Honorable George H. Perry is your pastor. I'm Dennis Porter, assistant pastor. And tonight we conclude our study in the book of Psalms, Psalm 150. Praying our praise. Let us go to our Father in prayer. Most high God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for allowing us to come together. God, you are who you say you are. You can do what you say you can do. I am who you say I am. I can do all things in Christ. Your word is alive and active in me. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight, we ask you to bless this, this offering. We ask you to speak to, speak through me. Touch the hearts, souls, and minds of all those that will see this broadcast. Touch them and keep them in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Speak to me, speak through me, and let your word edify yourself and lift up the hearts tonight in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. Psalm 150. Psalm 150. And we have a little technical difficulty. So let us go and let us read from Psalm 150. Amen. We are live. We are live. We are live. Praise you, Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery of the heart. Praise Him with the timbrel dance. Praise Him with string instruments and words. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. All right. Good evening, y'all. How y'all doing? <coughs> We're coming out of Psalm 150 tonight. And we begin our discussion, all prayers, finally, in one way or another, becomes a praise. No matter how much we suffer, no matter our doubts, everything finds its way in the praise, the final consummating prayer. This is what we say that other prayers, this is not to say that other prayers are inferior, only that all prayers are pursued to become praise. If you think about it, all prayers eventually become praise. Why? Why would that happen for you? Why do all prayers eventually become praise? Because God is going to bless you. You believe that God is going to bless you and it becomes a praise. Okay. So when you start out at a bad point, what is your prayer for? To help you. To help you. So, now that we established that we want to move from point A to point B, what is, what is praise? What is praise? So how do we get to worship? By praise. We get to worship by praise. We get to worship by praise. So, okay, what I want you to do now is use your imagination and come up with as many things that you can that you are thankful for. 
And then, I mean, simple things and big things. And then we'll talk about them for a few minutes. Take a few minutes to think about things that you are thankful for, that you are truly thankful for. And then who would like to lead us off? Hello. Okay. I'm thankful for God sending his son. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for my family. Because without God, then I wouldn't have a family. And so I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for my church family. I'm thankful for my job and the people at my job. I'm thankful for... Uh, uh, God giving me a talent to play piano. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I'm thankful for all those things she's thankful for, and I'm thankful that God let me live this long, and I'm thankful for him counting me worthy and for saving my soul. Okay. And I'm thankful for living in America where I can serve him in the spirit. Okay. And then I've been really praying for those people who've been hit so hard by water, tornadoes, and earthquakes, and all that. Okay. And I'm thankful to God that I'm, I'm not there, and I'm thankful that He misses all the falls. Okay. And I'm grateful. How y'all doing? And I'm thankful well. for the same thing for my church family and okay. for my blood family. All right. So everybody's got something. Anybody else? Who's next? What, else, what all are we thankful this for this evening? I'm thankful for being able to come here. Thankful for being able to come here. Thankful for your health and your strength. Thankful for health and strength. Whatever level it is. Mm -hmm. No matter what level it is. Yes. For keeping me in my right mind. Oh, yes. My right mind. All right, so now, think back over the last year. What has made you become a person of praise, no matter how minor it was? Um, about two weeks ago, I was listening to him over the music in my house, and I started realizing all the things that got done for me that I hadn't realized. First time in your life that you really realized that I had been that that thankful. You know, I've always prayed to God and thank you for doing this to me. But I've come to realization of some things in my life would be that way had not intervened and put it together. And really was thankful and realized that I hadn't been thankful enough and realized how thankful I really was and how grateful that I had become. Humble. Anybody else? Well, I was really thankful that I could get out of the bed. I, I woke up and it felt like my leg and my feet and all was numb. And I couldn't even get up to stand on him. And I said, instead of complaining, I'm going to thank God that things are as well as they are because I could not even be alive. Mm -hmm. Could not be alive. We are in Psalm 150. And thankful for doctors, mm -hmm. lawyers, <laughs> thankful for uh, preachers, ministers, yeah. thankful for. God bless us with the church yes. and the church home. Yes. Amen. Thankful for a president, even though sometimes we may or may not. <laughs> well, you got to abide by. Yeah. 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 I don't agree plan. with it. That's for sure. We certainly not agree. You said 150. Psalm 150. Already read. Okay. Well, Already I just, read. I forgot my Bible, so I got to use this today. Huh? I said I forgot my Bible, so I have to use this today. Okay. And by the looks of it, there's going to be a bunch of scrolling. Okay. 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 Oh, he said he already read. Psalm 150, already read. Okay. 
So, the psalmist gives us a final doxology call for praise to God, both in his sanctuary, the tabernacle, or the temple, or in his mighty expanse of heaven. For his greatness, abundance greatness, for who he is, and his powerful acts, for what he has done. No instrument is to remain silent, and neither is any voice. Everything that breathes is to render praise. Thus the Psalter ends the call to worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What is hallelujah? Praise. 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 Hallelujah praise. is the highest praise. praise. So when we praise in hallelujah, you don't get no higher. But is it always sincere? Uh. You think it is? Depends on the person. Depends on the person. Yeah. It depends on the person. So only you know if your hallelujah is really a hallelujah. Right. Or somebody can say hallelujah and have no inkling, no, no, no suggestion of true praise at all. They just hallelujah. <laughs> you laugh. Why you laugh? You heard it that way before? Anybody else want to talk about a circumstance or a feeling in the last year, even if it was just a minute, where you made the most sincere, you recognized that this was the most sincere praise that you had ever had? Sister Dean already gave us one where she said she realized that, okay, this is it. This is a true praise. Anybody else? So why, why would the psalmist mention praising God here on earth and heaven praising God at the same time? Why do y'all think? Why do you think when David wrote this? When he said, everything that has breath, no instruments, nowhere, should not withhold praise. Why do you think that that was his thought process? Why would it be your thought process? He put man on earth to give man reason to praise. Okay. Give God praise in here. Okay. Jesus said. Go ahead. Jesus said that we hold our peace the rock to cry out the praise. If we hold our peace, the rocks will cry out the praise. Alright. Why else? He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. So the heavens should be praising because he created the heavens. The earth ought to be praising because he created the earth. For who he is. Let's bring it down to a level that we can all understand. What happens when you get hold to a, another food another food analogy? What happens when you get hold to a good piece of cake? What do you, okay, you eat it. And after you eat it, what do you do with it? Who do you tell about? 
Oh, you tell everybody that you can about how good that cake was. Yeah, that's true. You don't want to share that piece. That's why you no, I don't want to share the cake. That's why you wouldn't eat it. Then you tell them how good it was. So the cake gets done. Depends on what kind of cake it is for you. Because yeah. my favorite cake, I don't, I don't share. Like but the cheesecake ain't yeah. nobody getting. Well, teacher, somebody came to drive through the day and they told me they said, go here by side in between that they say here. And I asked them to get to go with my mouth. Oh, God, where? Hold on, hold on. Did, 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 did you do one of these? You know I did. <laughs> I know Popeye's all red. <laughs> you know I did. I, I offered that prayer. Thank you. Lord, come on, baby. Come on. Don't let him fool me. Don't let him fool me. All right. So, everybody got Psalm 150? How many times do you see the word praise in that song? Too many. <laughs> What's a lot? You get it in every verse. Yeah, every verse. Every verse. It's two in most of the verses. Six, seven, eight. So how many times? Fourteen. Fourteen, thank you. Fourteen times. So if he mentioned the word praise 14 times, what is it you might want to really want to do? Praise. He mentioned praise 14 times. So it must be something very important. He brought the number of completion together twice. The number of perfection, he brought it together twice to give you 14. One in the morning, one in the evening. One on the east side of this continent, one on the west side of this continent. One at the beginning of the week, one at the end of the week. Y'all with me? One on the top of the sea, one at the bottom of the sea. Are y'all catching the theme there? What did I give y'all all of? Seven praises. Seven seas, seven days of the week, huh? You counted twelve? Yeah. I counted fifty. I counted thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I count thirteen as well. That's what I did. So now. All that number seven stuff I gave you don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still true. <laughs> you still praise at the beginning of the week, praise at the end of the week. Mm. Praise at the beginning <laughs> of the day, praise at the end of the day. Gave you seven praises. Mm. What does it suggest about the psalmist's mood when he was writing this? What kind of mood would you be in if you were writing something to sand? Praise this, thankful. praise that. Thankful, good. I'm thankful, happy. happy. What else? Humble. Humble? In a praising mood. In a praising mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it puts you in a happy mood. Puts you in a... Emotional. Emotional? I get very emotional when I'm praising because the emotions that I'm feeling towards God makes me crazy more. So what do those emotions mean? What, where do those emotions come from? Think of the spirit. Within. Say that again. Within. Within. Why does the emotion come from within? The Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. All right. So now, are you feeling happiness or are you feeling joy? Joy. Hold on, baby. Why do you say joy? Because. Okay, but why do you feel joy instead of happiness? Because I thank God for being joyful. You thank God for being joyful. Do you know the difference between being joyful and being happy? Yes. 
No. Yes, Jane. If you're happy, if you're talking about yourself, you could be a joke, you're being, you're spreading your happiness to other people. I like that. I like that. When you're joyful, you spreading it. When you're happy, you're talking about yourself. I think happiness is more of a, I guess you could say, a, a mindset. Something that did something that occurs or something that happens in your life makes you happy. A certain answer you get makes you happy. Whereas joy, joy is more of an emotion that comes from within that you express outward. I'm good with all that. Yes, sir. Joy is something that God gives to us. Jesus said, "My joy, I live with you. My joy remains with you." Happy, I can be happy about a lot of things, but not joy about a lot. But the joy that I feel is the joy that God gives me that the world can't take away. Baby girl, how old are you? Fourteen. Break it down so a fourteen-year-old can understand that preaching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like to answer. <laughs> Joy is something when it comes from within because God gives it to us. Happy you can be happy about having a bicycle, happy about getting a piece of cake, but you're not necessarily joyful. Joyful is that expression that no matter what state I'm in, I can be joyful because God gave me that joy. It's like that song, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Yes. That's, that's <coughs> can that's I? Joy. Can't nobody take it. Can nobody take away? That's what I was looking for. Yeah. So, what makes you happy can make you sad. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But what can make you unjoyful? Nothing. Nothing can make you unjoyful because the joy comes from the Creator Himself. The only one that can take your joy is the one that gave it to you. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now I can make you happy. And before you finish getting to your point of happiness, I can have you crying. It won't be tears of joy. Right. And you can do the same thing to me. So the difference between happiness and joy is happenstance. You just happen to be standing in that place that make you feel good at the moment. But that joy is something that is lasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make sense? So when you go to a point of praise and you're talking about joy, you have reached a point that's down on the inside that can't nobody, can't nobody mess with. I don't care how hard he slapped me upside my head. I can turn the other cheek and still smile. And when he smacked me again, I'm going to punch him in his throat and keep on smiling. <laughs> All right. We're doing this now? That's joy. <laughs> That's your joy. <laughs> oh, I would get a lot of joy out of that. Oh, I did what Jesus said. I turned the other cheek. He didn't say I had to take two. He said turn the other cheek. <laughs> All right. When have you felt compelled to express your praise to God in a similar way? When have you felt like that you just like, well, Dana's example. When have you felt like David when he's writing this? That everybody needs to know that you got to praise the God that I know. You need a piece of this cake. How, how, how many times when have you felt that? When did you wake up in the morning knowing that you know that you know that everything's going to be all right no matter what's going on? Yeah. When he brought me through something that, that I just seemed like I can't hardly make it through it. But just, the, just when, he, when he brought me through. And I know that nobody do it but him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. How, what is something that can't nobody do but him? We can't, 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 we can't do nothing without his help. I mean, we might think we're doing it on our own. Can't nobody do nothing like Jesus. We can't do nothing without his help. And can't nobody save you. But can't nobody save No, man, no. I'm a man. I stand on my own two feet. I can do my own thing, make up my own mind. Wait a minute, man. God gave me dominion. 
over her. Yeah, but you still boss. <laughs> <laughs> He's still on the throne. Yes, he but is. wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said he will not enter without my permission. Amen. That now, doesn't mean he won't do something to that doesn't mean he won't do something in your life that will open your eyes up to his existence and his works for you to invite him That's into your life. Oh, so in other words, he'll shut the door or four or five or six or seven or ten of them that make you go find the door that you need to knock on and beg to come in? Because he ain't going to make you, he's not going to make us do nothing. Amen. But he will close every other door for us to beg him. shows us our options and we see the option that we have either to go our own way or his way we see that our way leads to destruction his way will lead to peace joy and happiness that's what make us make that choice he didn't make it we make it because we how many of y'all wants to be saved how many of y'all in here want to go through trouble anybody in here want pain Nobody. So when God shows us that option, I can speak for myself. In 1992, I had the choice to choose to do what he called me to do, uh, continue to go my own way. And my own way, my household was in turmoil, my job was gone. I mean, everything was just in chaos. And I said, Lord, what is it? He just simply said, do what I do. And when I said yes, he said, I was only trying to get you to your peace. That's where your peace is, doing what God wants you to do. Because he knows best. Why are we so stubborn? <laughs> How did I know that was coming? <laughs> Why are we so stubborn when God is telling us, I got to ask. Yeah. All you got to do is follow the direction of the enemy. But instead of doing what he asked us to do, we want to do our own thing. I want to do white. So I'm going to answer that <coughs> two, uh, two uh, passages. Proverbs 14, 12, and Proverbs 6, 25 says the exact same thing. The way a man think seems right unto him, but there are the ways of death and destruction. We want to do because we think we know we Think we are right. We think. Didn't we have a, a brief discussion in Sunday school this past Sunday about um, dominion? Since we are given dominion over mm -hmm. earth, what is earth? That's dirt. Everything that is made from the earth is dirt. I don't care if it's steel, I don't care if it's gold, it all comes from the earth. We got dominion over all that. Right? Mm -hmm. So we can rule that. Anybody have any, anybody have any doubts about that? But what happens when we try to cross into the spiritual realm? Then we talk about three parts of us, the spirit, the soul, and the body. What was that last Wednesday night? Okay, the three parts of us, the spirit, the soul, and the body. So we got control over everything that's made of dirt. Everything that comes from the earth. We got that. But when we start talking about joy, when we start talking about eternal decisions, when we start talking about spiritual things, that's where our limits are met. Go ahead. No, I'm just agreeing with you. So when we get to that point where God has tried to show us a direction, but we have a limited, a finite, a small, a micro, a little bit, pequeño, poquito. Pequeño. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Galatians, Paul said that if we are led by the Spirit, then we walk in the Spirit. 
But so many times we are led by our flesh that we, we cater to it more than we do to the spirit. So when we cater to the flesh, what are we catering to? Dirty. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Verse 1 tells us where the Lord is to be praised. What is the meaning of in his sanctuary and in the mighty heavens? Where is God's sanctuary at? In our heart. How you know? Who told you? The Bible. The Bible. <laughs> That's how you know? I feel it. That's a better answer. Because mm -hmm. if you rely on somebody else to tell you where God lives, you got a problem. Because if you don't know that you're in a relationship, then guess what? I'm stepping out on you. You ain't in no relationship. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? If you don't know, then there is no, not nothing. So if the Bible told me, no, okay, that's good. The Bible said that we are a temple and the Holy Spirit dwells therein. But if we are not open, how does the Holy Spirit get into us? We got to invite him. If we don't give an open invitation, we're going to sit outside and look at you. Yeah, what he said. If I was there, I would. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yep. Not going to force his way in. That's the other word. Yeah, because if he was, he wouldn't be knocking. <laughs> oh, and speaking of knocking, and guess what he ain't going to do? He ain't slipping in no window. He ain't coming in the back door. He ain't kicking it over. That's right. Now, them other spirits, they will slip in through the back window. Yeah. They will slip in through the back door. The Holy Spirit coming through the front door. Why is the Holy Spirit coming through the front door? Huh? You ask him why else? You open it to him. You open the door. You open the door to him. But you're, hold on. Who is the Holy Spirit? So why does he need to use the back door to what he created? Are you going in the back door of your house if you don't want to? No way. Are you going in the back door of anything that you paid for? Let me go out there and get anybody car under your under your wheel without you giving me an invitation. What you gonna do? You gonna call the law? She gonna put a bullet in you. Somebody else gonna push you out. Just wreck it. Make sure it's make sure it's cold. <laughs> Just because I sat under your steering wheel, mm -hmm. weren't invited. Uninvited. Oh, but let me show up to your house. <laughs> don't knock on you. Don't just walk on in. Don't do that. You gotta get a bullet again. But the law is breaking and entering, whether you break or not. If I did not invite you in, trespassing becomes trespassing breaking and entering. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay, Miss Cora. I got you. All right. <laughs> as soon as I enter your house without your permission, I'm breaking and entering. That's right. And if you say I felt my life was in danger. <laughs> You ain't gotta be two inches taller. You can break it in in my house. Uh -huh, I didn't know her mental state. She had a demeanor of a deranged person. And a gun in her hand. <laughs> and I did not let her in. But she came in on the <laughs> She broke in my house. 
still was a cap gun, yeah. <laughs> Just ain't a gun. I thought it was a muzzle flash. <laughs> Believe you because you have. Mm -hmm. Whether they believe me or not, you don't live there. But yes, a, a, a teacher, if you enter un, uninvited where my where I have the right and I ask you to leave, I shouldn't have to ask you but one time. The second time, I'll show you to leave. So what's that? That's your own house? Huh? That's at your own house? Yes, at my home. Because if I come to yours and you ask me to leave money, you got to ask me for one time. Wait, do you have to give the intruder a warning before you start? We're getting off subject now. Did the intruder give you a warning that he's coming in? Where? Thus the word intruder. If you come in in the middle of the night. Well, I'm not You can invite the wrong things in as we'll go back to what we're talking about. You can invite the wrong things in if you let the word of something turn around. So like she was saying, the Bible told her that God was in her. You put a different Bible in front of you, it can tell you something else is in you too. Well, you got to be careful of people that you allow in your house too. Because they carry different spirits mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. And that's how different spirits went into your house. Because people that are unsafe, the devil will try and get them close to you so that he can get spirits close to you. Sometimes, like I say, you let them home folks in. They when they leave, their spirit is standing right there. Okay, so now we've discussed the sanctuary being the temple, our temple. And we know that the Holy Spirit comes in by our invitation. And we know that we allow inadvertently sometimes demons in because we've invited things in that we didn't want to invite. We know God is coming through the front door. God is not sneaking in. God is not going to try to attach himself to anybody else. No. This is like the sermon sister, um, the Baptist Barton priest, and let the truth will come down the street naked as it is. Yep. Ain't got to put on no, ain't got to put on nobody else's clothes. Right. God is the truth. So the truth ain't got to hide. Right. So why the mighty heavens? Why do the mighty heavens need to be praised? What is the meaning of the Lord to be praised in the mighty heavens? Why there? It's his kingdom. It's where his, his kingdom? Where his throne is. Oh, okay. So in other words, earth is an extension of his house. All the yes is pussy. <laughs> <laughs> he said heaven is throne, earth is pussy. An yeah, extension of his house. And this, exactly. Here this friend is saying, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the tournament of his power. That's everything that's around us. That's all around us. And I don't know why people think the universe is different. When God speaks of the world, he's speaking of the entire universe. All right. So what reasons do David give us to praise? Look at verse 2. What's the reasons to praise? His mighty acts according to his excellent greatness. What's a mighty act? Uh -huh. uh, he ain't just wake you up and woke up a whole bunch of people. <laughs> what was so mighty about that? Because I wanted to sleep on. A mighty act is something significant that mighty act is something significant God does that we we as people know there's absolutely no way that as a human or as the flesh should have been able to do or should have been able to survive. Um, you've got plenty of examples and stories that have come from as far as a little girl that was in a plane that, that crashed, fell 30,000 feet and survived with just broken bones and scratches to a gentleman who was on a skyscraper and fell however many stories and survived. I mean, there's all kinds of stories and, uh -huh. and evidence that shows God's mighty works. God's mighty works aren't the normal things that we, we've come to give him thanks for. God's mighty works are the unnormal things, the things that are, you have to, exp how do I explain that? To us, we know it's God, but to the non-believers, it's a big question mark. How is that possible? Okay, that's perfect. But... I was playing with Elder when I said he wakes us all up. Yeah. How many of us didn't get up this morning? 
How many folks did not get up this morning? How many folks did not get up this morning with the same faculties that they laid down with last night? How many folks got up this morning unable to move the way they was moving yesterday? Oh yeah, amen. So that is a mighty act. I was playing when I said what I said, but that is a mighty act. It is a miracle. It's a miracle. No, that I survived a car accident in 85 that I was pronounced dead on the scene. Yeah, that's a miracle. That's that a mighty act. Yeah, yeah. see the expression of God's love. Yeah. What reasons, well, we just went over a whole bunch of reasons that we have of our own. Verses 3 through 5 tell us how to praise the Lord. As you read these verses, what kind of scenes can you imagine? Verses 3 through 5. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the psaltery and the har and harp. Praise him with the thimble and dance. Praise him with string instruments mm -hmm. and organs. Praise him with the loud cymbal and praise him upon the high sound of cymbal. Well, what, what, what scene is that to you? Well, teacher, in Michigan, church I belong to me saxophone, trumpet, trombone, drums, guitars, bass, keyboard, all those instruments has a, a breath scope. Mm -hmm. And this is why David said that the string instrument with all these things, and I don't know why people have a problem with these instruments being in the church. God created all of that, and all of that take a breath stroke. Even David tapping that drum take a breath stroke. And that stick in that drum, if you put your hand in that bass drum, you feel that breath come out of there every time you hit it. Am I right about it, David? But so there are some churches that they do not believe in the musical know. instruments. All you get is just the same. That's fine. All that's fine. Yeah. The question was, what do you think of? How many times have I told you our father love a party? <laughs> is this a party? That's a party. So if you're going to a church that, well, we don't want no instruments. Mm -hmm. We don't want no music. We don't want that breath stroke. We don't want that piano. We don't want that trumpet. We don't want that. Why? Because you, God made for you to praise him and uplift his name. And if you can't sit in the church and praise him, you, you, know, you can pray him without it. Yeah, yeah, you can. 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 Yeah, you, you can still praise him and have a party with that instrument. Yes. Uh, 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 There's something about instruments that bring the spirit to the What does something about instruments that bring the spirit? What does the scripture say? Make a what kind of noise? Joy. Joy. Your voice. Now, your voice can be joyful. Your voice can be horrible too. Yeah. I'm, just, I, 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 I'm just I'm just gonna say this. St. Frederick's, for example, when we've been here and we haven't had no music and we're singing, yes, we're singing praise to God, but that's really all I feel we're doing. That's you bring you bring you. Just let me explain. You bring the music into the picture, and I witness not just myself but other people. They get that joy. They get that praise spirit within them because that music just adds that it little thing to it. Yes, it, it, add, it, adds, the, it, add, it adds yes. Well, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with music. Look up what moves the spirit of God on your no, uh, computer. Look up what moves the spirit Look up what moves the spirit of God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody else got that look last week. I, 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 that, 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 that's why I caught myself. Somebody reminded me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got in trouble in school my whole life about speaking out loud. Still with me. I'm still with Dana, we could never tell. Uh, <laughs> the spirit of what? what moves the spirit of God? Uh, sister, uh, about uh, 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 elder. Yeah. Somebody's got a sign. Yeah, no, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. 
we we gonna wait for this one. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why I call time out. We gonna wait for this one. I see time. What is the spirit of God? Yes. There are seven things that happen when the spirit is music. It just doesn't say that music's one of them. What moves the spirit of God? Go ahead. The seven things. The seven things that happen when the Holy Spirit moves is what it says. It is the spirit of God. Yeah, okay. So the lost are saved, the sick are healed, the demon possessed are set free, Jesus is glorified, holiness is increased. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are stirred, evangelism becomes priority. That's what it Googled. What moves the Spirit of God or what happens when the Spirit of no, God moves? No, I said what moves the Spirit of God. That's what happens. The movement of the Holy Spirit. Music moves the Spirit of God. When there is, even here, when there is no music, what eventually starts to happen? And what does that create? The Spirit of God is moved by music. And, and, and Elder pointed out one night. Find that verse and send it to me then. Alright. How, how does this kind of worship compare to your own? How does this kind of worship compare to your own? Triggers you is what? Love. What is broken of lyrics? What do lyrics express? Feelings, feelings. What is love? God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is love. 
But what is love? So when when musicians play, the spirit is moved. The Holy Spirit likes good music. His power is released, his mind is known, and his presence is felt when the right type of music is played and sung. Yes, sir. Another example of this is found in the life of David. As a young man, he was gifted in playing the harp. After King Saul fell away from God, an evil spirit frequently troubled him. Wanting to be freed from this oppressing spirit, Saul called for David to come play the harp for him. And we are told David would take the harp and play it with his hand, then Saul would become refreshed and well. The distressing spirit would depart from him. This troubling demon was not leaving because he couldn't stand the music. He was fleeing because that harp music coming from the, from the anointed hands of David would bring the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when the Spirit comes, the power demons are not eager to hang around. Oh, yes. Verse number six. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Yes. Do you think that everything that has breath means literally everything? Yes. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. So if he said everything that has breath, praise the Lord, and if everything is what? Ants. All. Ants. All. all. So if all is all, if that's all that all is, what moves the Spirit of God? Music. Music. Praise. Yes, yes, yes. I was just about to say there's a bird outside my window every morning when I'm praising and I'm praying to God. That bird is singing. I realized this morning me and him was in tune with each other. <laughs> Who sings at night? Oh, and that I said that. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, you're talking about moving the Spirit of God. Years ago when I was playing here, um, at that time I didn't know the Bible like I know it now. And I had never read about the Holy of Holies and how God covered the Holy of Holies with, like a, with a, like a big cloud went over the top. And that day I was playing, and I remember looking up and we were playing music, and it was a long song. I looked up, and it's like everybody was kind of like in a trance. It was weird. And I looked around, and everybody was really into the music, and they were, had their eyes closed, and I did too. And I, and I explained it later, I started crying. I saw most of the feeling I had the Holy Spirit. And then I was telling Pastor Perry about how I felt like God had come over with a big blanket the spirit and just hold it over the church and I could feel them all in their dwelling and it was through the music that it brought that and then I read about oh, him over spirit. and over the, the Holy 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 why do you think there is such a big battle over who controls the music industry? <laughs> hmm? It's the kind of music that they play. They can play bad stuff really? too. Hmm? Well, it's money. Why do you money? Money. Mm -hmm. but, no, we can't. Um, brother, it's it's, it's, sta it's stated. Stated it's stated. It's stated in there. The music. Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Lucifer had every good sound in him. Okay. He was head of the angelic choir. Okay. Mm -hmm. God loved music. He okay. created music. When Lucifer was kicked out, he he still battles. Even though he knows he's lost, he can't win. He's still fighting for what he can get. And he only can get that if we give it to him. Mm -hmm. It, it's it's it it's stated it's stated in what I just read that that uh, the, the 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 devil and the evil the evil spirits they won't stick around because the music brings the Holy Spirit and, and sends them fleeing it sends them fleeing so the battle with that is if they can take away that music that invites the Holy Spirit to chase them away they beat the one thing that they can't beat so in other words. If they can persuade and convince people to stop listening to the, the spiritually inviting music and replace it with the Satan inviting music and the sinful music, 
you're blocking the door on God and you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to come in. And they can have free roam. Uh Whoever, go ahead. But there's also a thing too that I always uh, kept uh, when I was a little girl uh, because my mom used to do it a lot in church uh, back when the Elder Haynes was here. And uh, I, I do remember my dad, my dad and Pastor Hayes used to say, you know, when you come, the devil never knows what, what you are. Well, you better talk about you know, it. When you moan, and when yeah. you yeah. moan, yeah. you know, yeah. and you come, and you come those praises, and while the music yeah. is going, yeah. and it's ushering in that spirit, yeah. then, yeah, yeah. yeah. The devil can't tell what you're doing, so he gets yes, real mad. Yes. But yeah, but you understand, you understand what I was saying, right? I mean, look, oh, yeah, look, yeah. look, look, look at the Grammys. I think it was the Grammys that we just had. Look at, I think it was Sam Smith and someone. Look at how evil yeah. the presentation was, how the yeah. performance was, yeah. how evil yeah. it was, and, and they were showing that to the world. Like they weren't just showing it to the audience. The world was seeing that. Kids, innocent children who look up to that were seeing that. That's what the that that's what the battle is about right now. It's not about who's bigger and better. It's about who they can corrupt and they target. And who God is trying who God is trying to fight and protect, they are trying to push God out. Say it boy, say it. And if they can push God out, guess what? There's nobody to protect them. Because they're going to be so corrupt and blinded to the Holy Spirit that all they're going to think there is is the demonic and the Satan and the sin that they're throwing at them. If you look at it, years ago, I remember when I was a kid, we used to love to sit around the TV and watch the grab and stuff like that. And there was always people up there thanking God. For the Never understood for the accomplishment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You hear little thank God now, and, and more than, and it have become so to the point you get fights. Yep. I thought that was so so ignorant of Will Smith to walk up there and slap that. That ain't the glamour. Like, I, I, I shot him. I shot him. I promise you, I shot him. You know, it, you know. It. If I wouldn't have did it right then, I'd have been outside waiting on him. What do you What do you notice now? What do you, but what, that's what, what's going on in our world now. What do you every, notice now? Every time a six-year-old kid can come to school with a gun yeah. and shoot a teacher, yeah. but we have taken God out of the schoolhouses, yeah. we've taken him out of the courthouses, I don't even feel him in churches now, uh, mm-hmm. because we don't have the music all the time. It's, so, from, okay. it's from music, it's from movies, it's yes, from watching, yes. watching oh, their role yes. models. Tell me the last time you actually saw somebody who was blessed with a gift from God, actually thank God, not thank some man or some yeah, woman yeah, yeah, that yeah, brought yeah. them up. You know, they you know, say Denzel Washington, he never do a scene. He, he, he prays before each scene that he, he does. He, mm-hmm. he, he's done that ever since, and he, he continues to do that. He, he realized that his, his ability, his gift, if that came from a book. So, if music is controlled by the dark side, Mm -hmm. how do demons get in? Do they come in through the front door? No. No, They They are coming in sneakingly, and if you are playing music, you are singing songs, and you have no idea what you're singing, what are you doing? You are inadvertently opening the door to let something in. When we were kids, last night, the night before, 24 Robbers was at my door. I got up and let him in. Hit him in the head with a rolling pin. <laughs> Y'all never played that game? I remember that. I remember. Uh, what was the one you look in the mirror? Bloody Mary, 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 Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. You say that so many times? Huh? Candy man. All those things that you all those things you said as a kid that you thought were a joke, guess what? They were real. I always did that as a little child. Because I saw some things in the mirror one time. When we did that, I sure did. And so whoever controls the music industry is trying to control what is ushered into the minds of young people. Yep. And all people. Yep. 
and anybody that's not paying attention to what they're listening to. That's why the Spirit of God that is moved by music moves the way it moves when it does. Yeah. You gotta really listen to that. In the Hebrew, the first and last word of this prayer is hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To what extent are your life bracketed by that word? How often are you saying hallelujah? Are you getting up? Hallelujah. You're going to bed? Hallelujah. Do you have some hallelujahs throughout the day? Yes, Lord. Every time I walk in the door, my first thing I shout glory. Hallelujah. To it. And this past year, God has given me something that I've never had before. Of knowing how to wait on Him. That was one of the things Brother Teacher that I just didn't know how to do wait. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't stand waiting. It would drive me crazy. But I learned years ago when I walk in my house, I shout glory, hallelujah. If you just knocked off the next question, the next question is, there are no shortcuts to praise. You, you can't shortcut it. You either praise it or you ain't. Thank you. There's no shortcuts to praise. If you if we remain sensitive, we maintain the sensitivity to the songs. Preceding this one, we will not be insensitive to all the tears and doubts and pains that are summed up into praise. Everything we go through, mm -hmm. everything that we've done, everything that we've seen, seen will bring us to a praise. Mm -hmm. From the time you were knee high to an end to today, there is something that no matter what it was, you sat down and you realized, I got a reason to be happy. I got something to praise about. Yes. Augustine claimed that a Christian should be a hallelujah from head to foot. Then the question is, are you? Yes. Are you a hallelujah? Are you a praise? Glory! <laughs> Do you want to be? Hallelujah. What needs to be done to get you there? How are you going to get to that praise? Praise for the praise. For the praise. Oh, so it's a thing that must be practiced. Yeah. Why must it be practiced? Mm -hmm. practice perfect. perfect practice makes perfect. Okay, good. So, Michael Jordan, greatest basketball player they say ever lived. He practiced. He practiced. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, they he stopped practiced. him from dunking when he was in college. So, what did he do? He, he developed something else oh. called a hook shot. So now what do you need to do when you find yourself in a situation that you don't know how to get out of? You got to develop your own praise. Yeah. Amen. My praise ain't going to work for you. That's your right. praise ain't going to work for me. Amen. Each, Amen. Own. Each one of us has a gift. And what does the book say? Stir up that gift. Stir up your gift. And if you don't stir up that gift every now and then, What's going to happen to it? You lose it. It'll die. If you don't use it, you lose it. Well, wait a minute now. That, that can't be true. Yes, it is. Why God going to take back a gift? Support that. Away. Support that. Where does it say that in the Bible? He, don't, he, he don't does say it in the Bible. I gave five, I gave two, and I gave one. Oh, and the yeah. one I gave one burial. When you don't use your gift, what are you doing with it? You, you bury it. Yes, yeah. you bury it. And when you bury your gift, guess what? what? Oh, you slowful, ungrateful servant. Give it here. Yeah. Oh, you took that five and made it ten. Here, go make twelve. Yes. Uh -huh. So when you have a gift and you don't use it, don't expect to keep it. You might not use it today. You might not lose it tomorrow. But it's going to gradually go away. Yeah. And brother teacher, that's what happens when people come to church and they just sit idle. Sooner or later they get bored, they stop coming regularly. And then after a while they just get comfortable with not going. I encourage anybody to get me a part, be a usher, be a choir member, do something that it gives you a feel of obligation. Mm -hmm. I have a responsibility here, yeah. you know? And when you feel that, you can feel joy about being here all the time. Because mm -hmm. I'm just a, a, a pew member. All right, now we, saw, we talked about hum. This is a song I came across a few months ago that stuck with me. Listen to this hum, and if you don't mind, hum along.
You don't own the rights to this music. Jason said it made him think of the Norse music. The song is called A Song from Heaven. The young man had a dream that he saw Michael in all his battle with Gideon. And he stood with his sword in his hand. And he started to sing that song and he started to hum. And from all over heaven, every angel converged to go to battle with the Lord. If that spirit moved in you, when you hear that hum, that is something about you that is really different than everybody else. If that harm does not touch you. That's my praise. When I go to the gym. That's my praise. When I'm ready to go into a situation I don't want to go into. That's my harm. Mm -hmm. If I'm going into battle. You hear me humming. You're going to get it. That is a battle cry. If the angels have a battle cry to bring the spirit of the Lord into them, who are you? Amen, amen, amen. You better sing your praise. You better understand the mood of the spirit of the Lord. You got to sing. You got to have that music in you and that spirit is going to move the Lord and he's going to do what he's going to do. David danced till he was naked. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's the spirit of the almighty God. Yes, he did. No shame, no gain. Pray us up. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this powerful and awesome lesson that we've had here tonight, God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you do and all that you're doing for us, God. Heavenly Father, we just lift, to, lift those who were not able to make it here tonight, God. We lift them up to you, God. Just ask you to please visit their homes and just bless each and every one of their families, God. Yes, Lord. I ask you to bless each and every one here present tonight, God. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for another day's journey, God. Thank Our you. Our Heavenly yes, Father, Lord. as we leave this place but not your presence, we yes, just ask for your continued blessing, protection, yes, and guidance upon yes, us, Lord. We just give you all the praise, all the glory. We thank you, Lord, for your Son, Christ, who saved our souls, God, as we just celebrate his death and resurrection this week, oh, God. Yes. We just thank you, Lord. In your precious and heavenly Son, Jesus' name, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Amen. 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 I like that one, too. <laughs> well, I'll be good. Look, make me think I'm about to clean out.